Names and Formulas for Ionic Compounds Binary ionic compounds are made up of one metal ion and one nonmetal ion that are joined together in an, in an ionic bond. Binary referring to the way that this is written, okay? The name of the binary ionic compounds comes from the name of its elements as described below. The cation, or the positive ion, is the first part of the name. Okay. In a binary ionic compound, this is always the metal. Its name is the same as the name of its element. Okay. So the example I give here uh, is Al2O3. The cation is aluminum, so the first part of the name of this compound is aluminum. Okay, so we say yes. The anion, or negative ion, is the second part of the name. In binary ionic compounds, this is always the nonmetal ion. This part of the name resembles the name of its element, but with the ending IDE. Okay. So for the same compound, the anion, a a Al2O3, the anion in this compound is oxygen, which we rename oxide. So the second part of the name of this compound is oxide. So name Al, uh, the name of Al2O3 is aluminum oxide. Okay, see the chart or the list of, uh, of uh, common non-metal ions uh, below, okay? So fluorine, okay, you'll see here fluorine, fluoride, okay? Its symbol is F, and it has this negative symbol because its charge is negative one. It can receive one negative uh, or one, it can receive one electron, and it's in group 17. Chloride, it's going to be the same in that regard. Its chemical symbol here with its negative sign, and it's a group 17. But chlorine becomes chloride. Bro, bromine becomes bromide. Iodine, iodide. Oxygen, oxide. Sulfur, sulfide. Selenium, selenide, nitrogen, nitride, and phosphorus, phosphide. And you can see that it'll start to change, right? Depending on how many, uh, the charge will start to change depending on how many each of these can receive. Remember that oxygen has a, uh, that it has uh, valence electrons uh, of six, right? It's in group 16. They all have six. And same with sulfur and same with selenium. And so that means that they can receive two uh, electrons. Of course, nitrogen and phosphorus, they can receive three. Okay, so the anatomy uh, of an ionic compound, the positive ion, remember this is the cation, Al, okay. Uh, the negative ion, and this is the cation. Okay, now it's saying these are, this is called the subscript right here. You see it says subscript. Subscript tells us how many of each of these there are, right? So Al2 means that there are two, um, that there are two aluminums with a charge of three plus because aluminum can give away three. Um, oxygen can receive two. So you can see um, that when they combine together, they're again, electrically neutral. Three plus, three plus. Okay, so what is three plus and three plus? It's six, positive six, right? What is negative two plus negative two plus negative two? Negative six. 
So negative 6 and positive 6 is electrically neutral. The positive cation always goes first in the, in the, in the metal. Negative anion comes second. This is the nonmetal. The subscript, subscripts tell you how many of each is present. In this case, 2 uh, Al3 plus and 3 O3, uh, oh, sorry, O2 negative. If there is no subscript, what do you assume the number is? Okay, you would assume that it's a one. Okay, so now I want you to write the names for these compounds formed by these elements. Okay, you're going to um, pause, grab a piece of paper, and you're going to write these out. Okay, so rubidium and bromine, oxygen and magnesium, stronium and fluorine. Okay. So use the things that we've learned, go back in the video if you need to, and write these down. And then I'll go over how you do them, and you can test yourself. Okay. So rubidium bromine becomes rubidium bromide. Remember, we're adding the IDE. Oxygen and magnesium becomes magnesium oxide. Remember, the cation or metal always goes first. And the non-metal or anion always goes second and gets an IDE. Stronium fluorine and fluorine is strontium fluoride. Although an ionic compound is made up of ions, overall the compound is electrically neutral. It has no electrical charge or electric charge. This means that the positive charges on the metal ion must balance the negative charges on the non-metal ions. So I already talked about this, but again, just to review it, 3 plus 3 is 6 plus negative 2 plus negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 6. This means that they are electrically neutral when together. When writing the formula for a binary ionic compound, you first need to determine the charges on the ion. Use your periodic table of ions for this. Once you know the charges, you can figure out the formula using the crossover method. You can use the periodic table of ions, which I'll provide you with. But it also should hopefully make some sense to you since uh, metals give and non-metals receive electrons. And if you know how many valence electrons something has, you know if it's going to give their valence electrons, it'll give whatever it has. And if they're going to receive, they can only receive as many as are left in the, in the shell, in the electron shell. Okay? So the example here of aluminum oxide, um, and we use something called the crossover method. Um, but you can see here, 3 plus and 2 minus. Okay? If we use the crossover method, this will tell us that oxygen will have, th uh, there will be three oxygens for every two aluminums. Okay, so you can see that's what I did here. I crossed the numbers. So when you finish making a binary ionic compound, you ignore the charges and just cross the numbers. Okay, so you don't put them back up here anymore. You just put them down there. So what are the chemical formulas for calcium chloride and aluminum sulfide? So I want you to test yourself out now, based on what you know. Grab that piece of paper and write it out. Calcium chloride and aluminum sulfide. And then I'll go over the answers with you. So pause. Okay, so what are the chemical formulas for calcium chloride? 
So first of all, we take a look at uh, we take a look at uh, the the words. So calcium. What is calcium symbol? Okay. Well, if you take a look on your periodic table, you notice the calcium symbol is C, right? Uh, sorry, it's C A. Pardon me, C A. And what is its charge? Calcium is a two plus. Okay. Um, chloride C L has a charge of one minus. Okay, so in order to figure out how many of each we need, we're going to cross them over. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna you don't have you do not have to draw the arrows and all this stuff, okay? I'm just showing you so that uh, you understand. So calcium two plus, so that means that there will be two chlorides and that there will be one. Um, yeah, so I'll just erase these guys here. Okay, so that is how you would figure out uh, the the binary ionic compound, how to write the binary ionic compound of calcium chloride. Now, aluminum sulfide, if you take a look on your periodic table, okay, or in your periodic table of ions, it'll tell you that aluminum has a charge of 3 plus, okay? Um, so an aluminum symbol is a L. Three plus, okay, and sulf sulfur or sulfide, okay, sulfide is sulfur, and that has a charge of two minus. So if I'm going to cross them, okay, again, I'll just change my bring them across there. We'll have three sulfurs or sulfide, and we'll have two aluminums. Okay, so that is how you figure out how to do. Sorry, that little guy. There we go. So that's how you figure out how to do an binary, uh, binary ionic compound for sulfide. When you look at the periodic table of ions, you may notice that some metals form more than one type of ion. These metals are called multivalent metals. Okay, Copper can form ions with a 1 plus or a 2 plus. So take a look at your periodic table of ions and notice that some of them are almost cut in half and they'll have they'll have multiple charges, okay? To distinguish between the ions, a Roman numeral has, uh, a, num a Roman numeral is written after the name of the metal, okay? So we have copper, that's Cu, plus is written as copper one, and pronounced copper one, okay? Cu two plus is written as copper two, or copper with the two, Roman numeral two, Okay, and brackets, and is pronounced copper two. On the periodic table, the ion charges for a given element are listed with the most common charges at the top and the least common charges at the bottom. So you'll notice that, right? There's one at the top and one at the bottom. And that's the reason that it is. The most common ones at the top, the least common ones at the bottom. To write the chemical formula for a multivalent metal. You follow the same steps as for naming a binary ionic compound. The only difference is that you cannot control the charge on the metal on, uh, ion by looking at the periodic table. You must look at the Roman numeral in the name and that will tell you the charge. 
So just a review and a reminder on Roman numerals. Okay. Um, Roman numerals for charges plus one through plus seven are listed below. Okay. So the metal ion charge, one through seven, and this is the Roman numeral that's used. Okay. So one is I, two is II, three is III, four is IV, five is V, six is VI, and seven is VII. So my example for you this is uh, the name chromium-3 chloride. It tells you that the chromium ion in the compound is chromium-3+. plus. The chloride ion is Cl-, minus, using the crossover method to make sure the formula is balanced. So again, we're using that crossover method, Cr3+, plus, Cl1, we're crossing them, right? And then we're coming away with Cr1, Cl3.